our students and develop our students. And every time they just turn to the newspaper, and often you are in the newspaper, and they say, but that's not how it's done. Just look at what the U.S. is doing. Look at the war on terror. Look at the Iraq war. Everything you're saying, all of these ideas about ethics and justice and international right are meaningless. And so I just want to express to you how difficult you have made our job and how incredibly important I think our job is uh, if we want to change the way the next generation deals with uh, uncertainty and risk uh, domestically and in international relations. Uh, my question has to do with uh, the defense of the Iraq war as preemptive. Um, I know that you have held that position before, and what I know about preemptive war, uh, or its definition, it doesn't fit. And I don't know, I mean, I guess the, without uh, hard evidence of weapons, which, by the way, uh, just to remind everyone, the existence of uh, w WMD does not justify war, or else we would attack many nations. Um, but there's no credible threat. There was never a threat articulated in speech or displayed in military mobilization against the United States or the neighbors of Iraq. And so I still, unless you're purely a Machiavellian, that preemptive war is justified if you think you might someday want to uh, start a war with another country, then you might as well do it now. Um, because that is a complete disregard for international law. And so I just, could you give me your definition of preemptive war, and if you still subscribe to the fact that the Iraq war was a preemptive war, um, if, you could, if you could make that case for me. First of all, on, on, your, on your first point, I mean, I agree with you that the things that you identified that you teach are important. Uh, they're, they're, in fact, I mean, I issues of international order, international agreements, America's treaty obligations, uh, considerations of, of justice and, and morality, all of those things are enormously important and were taken seriously in the administration. They, they are also matters on which reasonable people can differ. And it's clear from your question that we would differ on them. But I don't think it's correct, I don't think it's accurate, and I think that the record belies the suggestion that these were ideas or considerations or principles or values uh, that were ignored by the administration. They weren't. They were, in fact, quite important in, uh, in our deliberations. Uh, in my book, I, there's, a, there's a memo that I reproduced from the summer of 2002 uh, called something like Anticipatory Self-Defense, and I forget the full title, but Anticipatory Self-Defense was in the title. You can probably find it in the index. If you read that memo, you will see that these considerations were taken into account. We obviously would come to different conclusions, but the notion that these were not important or they were ignored, I, as I said, I think is, is belied by the record. Um, what difference does that make? Well, I mean, the, the, it makes a big difference. Well, no, no, it makes a big difference. With all due respect, you were not elected president of the United States. George Bush was, so he's entitled to his opinion. That's question. And these are these are uh, these are um, your argument was that these things are ignored and don't matter. I want to tell you they were not ignored and they do matter. The administration came to different conclusions from the conclusions you would have come to about them. That's, that's my point. Now, on the, the issue of, of preemptive war and, and the legal and moral rationale for Iraq, let me say very briefly, because we have a long line, I don't want to take a, a, a long time on this, but there were two main arguments for the kind of legal and moral justification of the war. And they are both set out in the congressional resolution authorizing force in Iraq. One of them, which was an argument, interestingly enough, that Senator Biden championed, was, and he made a number of speeches in January of 2003 uh, to this effect. You could look them up. They're really quite interesting and, and very strong. He said, the war to overthrow Saddam Hussein is completely justified on the grounds that the UN put in place in 1991 a ceasefire arrangement 
which was this whole set of, of uh, resolutions that I referred to that created the, the inspection regime and the sanctions regime and the uh, and the, that whole web of containment measures. And he said Saddam Hussein's systematic undoing of those measures is a violation of the ceasefire agreement. It's a challenge to the UN Security Council and in and of itself justifies the war to overthrow him, given all the threats that he poses to the region and what he says and his policies and his, his ongoing threatening posture. And his history of, of having acted uh, in an extremely aggressive way. Now, that is one of the rationales for the war. The other was the general point that the United States, acting in its own self-defense, believed that Saddam Hussein was very hostile and that a conflict with him down the road, given his record, given his history, and you can't, you can't divorce the argument from the specific record and history of the Saddam Hussein regime, which was an extremely aggressive and bloody regime, very dangerous. Uh, given that record, the United States believed that it was inevitable that we were going to be uh, having a conflict with Saddam Hussein down the road, and we did not want to wait until Saddam chose the time and circumstances of the conflict. And as I said, under circumstances which could have been highly disadvantageous to us, for example, after he would have obtained a nuclear weapon. Um, uh, last point on, on the issue of WMD. It is true that we did not find the WMD stockpiles, the chemical and biological weapons stockpiles, that the CIA said we would find in Iraq. And that was a gigantic error. And American credibility was devastated by that error. And it will be a very long time before we recover from it. But what we actually did find in Iraq after we overthrew Saddam and thousands of inspectors went in to find out what was the story with the WMD programs was we found his chemical and biological weapons programs. He had facilities, he had materiel, he had personnel, he had the intention to re, uh, recreate his stockpiles, and he had put himself in a position where he could have the stockpiles in three to five weeks. And so, yet he calculated that he didn't want to actually maintain the stockpiles so that he could host an inspection and and pass the inspection and thereby get out from under the UN sanctions. I mean, he was playing a, a bizarre game of sending conflicting messages to different audiences and he outsmarted himself because he actually persuaded us, along with many other people, including many of his own generals, that he had WMD stockpiles. But in any event, he had the WMD programs and was a serious WMD threat, even though the United States made a, a very serious mistake uh, on the stockpiles point. I would just say that um, I'm not being partisan when I ask that question, and so I would completely disagree with Joe Biden. And I think your last point about the uh, capabilities question, I think that is completely factually false. And lastly, I would just like to applaud Georgetown University for not renewing your contract. Thank you. Uh, on the factually false point, I would refer you to the Iraq Survey Group report, which is available uh, on the Internet, and you can download it. It's three large volumes and it bears out what I said. Mr. Feith, my name is Buddy Moore. I'm an independent candidate for the U.S. Senate here in Colorado. And I would like to start off by saying that I believe that your presentation to here today is uh, a complete mischaracterization and duplicity in attempting to justify uh, genocidal war against Iraq and attacks on Afghanistan and I would uh, challenge your premise that Al-Qaeda was um, responsible for the 9-11 attacks and point to the fact that on the FBI website today, Osama bin Laden is not wanted by the FBI for those attacks, nor is the 23 other terrorists listed on that page wanted for the attacks of 9-11, and I can find nowhere on the FBI's website where any person is being sought for those attacks. Will you please comment on the hundreds and thousands of architects, engineers, firefighters, pilots, and politicians who are coming forward to say that the collapse of the Twin 